Welcome to this edition of The Roadie Reporter. I'll be your host for the segment, Mark Zakaria. Incumbents benefit from Rhode Island's last in the nation state primary, while challengers suffer from it. This year, however, it might have been worth the long wait, at least because of the interesting tea leaves it provides us all to read. For decades, the General Assembly has operated as a creature of uh, its one or two leaders. The Speaker of the House has enjoyed almost a monarch's power over the functions of Ocean State government, at least until the office of Senate President was created following the 2000 census. Ever on the lookout for a glib metaphor, your own erstwhile roadie reporter has frequently referred to the legislature as the pirate ship Smith Hill. That's a reference to both the ultimate power and precipitous falls from grace that typically mark the careers of its captains. The 2020 Rhode Island primary election might have just been a tell that signals one of those tragic ends for House and Senate leadership. The headline of the story on primary results this year is that the progressives are coming, the progressives are coming. House Speaker Nick Mattiello was personally invested in seven races in the Democrat primary. They all involved members of his leadership team, so the Speaker had brought out the big guns to ensure that his posse remained intact. <laughs> Too bad the progressive challengers won six of those seven races. Even running unopposed for his own place on the general election ballot, Mr. Mattiello got barely more than 300 votes himself. That's a mere fraction of the D votes cast in Rep District 15. So the captain of the pirate ship Smith Hill will have a number of newbies in his wardroom if they ever set sail next year. All those progressive youngsters will have big appetites the speaker will have to satisfy to get anything done. That is, assuming he retains the speaker's gavel in the first place. Over on the Senate side, things didn't look any better for Chamber President Dominic Ruggiero. His own race was a statistical tie on election night, with 1,100 mail ballots yet to be counted. Okay, odds are Senator Ruggiero has a very precise idea of the breakdown of those votes before the Board of Elections even opens them. So the smart money says he retains his seat. His real problem comes from the 16 progressives who won their Senate primaries and are now unopposed in the general election. Well, there are only 36 seats in the chamber, and currently the ruling class holds 33. If the Rs can take one or two of those remaining 17 seats, the progressives are in the driver's seat, the GOP has enough voting power to negotiate with either side, and Mr. Ruggiero is unlikely to hold on to his gavel. Ouch. As Bob Dylan once sang, the times, they are a-changin'.